The first 2025 commitment of the Kalen DeBoer era happened over the weekend, and there's no better way to do it than flipping one from the Auburn Tigers. Antonio Coleman, he should be a familiar name to Bama fans because Coleman flipped his commitment from Alabama to Auburn on December 22nd. He decided to run it back with a flip from the Tigers over the weekend and return to the Crimson Tide's 2025 class which he announced on Saturday. This also put Bama into the top 10, currently sitting at number nine overall in 2025. Bama was outside the top 25 back in January, but here we are back where Alabama fans belong in that top 10. And today I got the great Tim Watts on this video to talk some Bama recruiting. But first, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, lock into the channel because we're bringing it all off season. All right, let's bring on Tim Watts from Bama Online. And like I said, very rare to see one of these recruits flip back to the team that he was committed to after a flip away from that team. How was Kalen DeBoer able to pull this off and get Antonio Coleman back on board Saturday? You know, I think a big part was Freddie Roach, right? He was the one that recruited him to Alabama. He's had a relationship with him for multiple years. He was a stay over from the Saban staff to the Kalen DeBoer staff. I think he needs huge credit for, you know, also that's not his area, but that's his position. So obviously a really good relationship there. And I also think Kane Womack coming from South Alabama, had a good relationship, knew the kids at Sarah Land, um, has probably known Antonio Coleman just as long as Freddie Roach. So. I think both of those things worked in the favor. And also, you know, talking to people close to him, Alabama's where he wanted to be. I mean, there was definitely some confusion when you look back at the time he flipped, but that was almost like a different era, right? You had Ryan Williams, all the rumors. He was going to Auburn, fake rumors that, as Ryan has confirmed, were never even close to true. But Ryan, um, there was a lot of talk about Ryan possibly going to Auburn. I think that that played into him. Uh, his decision a little bit. And also Kay, uh, Kay Lacey, who was uh, committed to, is committed to Texas and um, was looking at Auburn. So maybe he just got caught up in the moment, but talking to people, Alabama's where he wanted to be. And I think at the end of the day, Alabama just did a better job recruiting as far as building relationship. And also Auburn lost their defensive line coach. Yeah. And as we know, you know, outside of the NIL, <laughs> recruiting is relationship. So those things still matter. I don't care about the NIL or anything else. Relationships still matter. Yeah, and Bama is turning that recruiting focus in-state under Kalen DeBoer, really building this foundation of the 2025 class with Alabama prospects. The in-state focus includes defensive lineman Antonio Col Coleman, who we just spoke about from Saraland, Alabama. Running back commitment Anthony Rogers. He's from po Pike Road, Alabama. And Miles Johnson, three-star linebacker commitment from Bruton, Alabama. So I wanted to ask you, who's next in-state? I got a couple names I want to ask you about. We'll start with Edge Zion Grady because he was once in this class from Troy, Alabama, the elite Edge, four-star recruit, decommitted when Nick Saban retired. What's the latest on Zion Grady? I know he's looking at George. I know he's taking some other visits as well, but what about Alabama? I think Zion, I think Alabama's in the mix. They're still recruiting him, um, still evaluating him. That, that's one thing that's kind of interesting. I think most people – your average fan doesn't realize is that Kalen DeBoer's staff might not like some of the guys that Nick Saban's like, and hmm. Kalen DeBoer's staff might like some that Saban didn't. So there's going to be a different philosophy. It'll be along the same lines when it comes to recruiting, but you're fitting for a different system, right? You're fitting different offense and different, different defense. So there's a lot of evaluation still going on. Um, Zion certainly got, like you said, committed to Alabama and, and certainly on, has been on Alabama's radar for some time. All right, let's head over to Birmingham, Alabama, and that's where the nation's number one ranked corner, Naeem Offord, is. Now, I saw Alabama recently offered his teammate, Timothy Merritt, recently. Was this a play to get Offord back on campus, get him back involved with Alabama, or, you know, are they just trying to recruit his teammate, Timothy Merritt? No, they like him. I mean, he's got a short sample size, but if you look at his highlight tape, he's fast, he's big, he's got all the physical traits you look for. And the one thing I think this defensive back, you know, with Nick Saban's staff, you had to be really like understanding of their defense. There was almost like a test, almost like the ACT, I felt like on the official visits where you ran through the the schemes and everything because it was so important to pick it up. I think I think uh, Kane Womack, I think it's going to be a little bit different where you just want your best athletes lined up against the, the best wide receiver and let them play. And Merritt fits that bill. I mean, physically, He's extremely gifted. Like I said, he's fast. If you watch his clips, short clips, 
but he's fast and he's got good size. Bama had him in camp last year and obviously liked him enough to offer him. I don't think it's a play. I've never heard of any package deal with Offord. Offord's going to be able to name his school, obviously committed to Ohio State. And, mm-hmm. You know, he's going to get a massive NIL offer when all is said and done, which will factor in. But uh, I don't think they're tied together at all. All right, let's move on then to safety Anquan Fagans. He's out of Oxford, Alabama. He's another five-star prospect within the state of Alabama. But looking at his recruiting prediction machine totals early on, it shows USC and Georgia out front. Is Alabama going to be able to make a run at Fagans this spring? Yeah, I think USC is where his brother's you know brother's going to school. I think that factored in um, uh, pretty early. I mean, George, he's going to have his you know another one's going to be able to pick his pick his schools that he wants to. Alabama's had some good success at Thompson High School, so uh, probably a continuation there. I know they like him. Another guy I really like is Derek Smith from the Selma area. He to me is one of the elite prospects in the country. Good as you're going to find athletically for a safety, he's got all those tools. Plays could play both ways, which most of these guys could. But, yeah, Fagans and Smith are going to be two Alabamas looking at heavily. All right. And we can't talk in-state recruiting without talking about Sarah Lynn QB, K.J. Lacey. Now, I know Alabama's trying to flip Deuce Knight and Julian Lewis, but they just landed Antonio Coleman. They're staying busy at Sarah Lynn High School. Are they going to make a run, a serious run, at flipping K.J. Lacey off of his commitment from Texas? You know, the thing that's interesting about quarterbacks is all of them are committed. Yeah. I mean, you're recruiting basically all your top guys. You're going to try to flip somebody. Lacey's on the board. I haven't seen Alabama make a push yet, but it's still early. There's still guys that are looking at Deuce. I think it's a guy they really like. Everybody likes Juju Lewis. Both of those guys are highly recruited. But I also think that, you know, those dominoes, even though they've fallen, they're probably going to have to fall again a little bit because a lot of those quarterbacks, again – you're looking for your quarterback you got to go take him from somebody at this stage so probably filling out process of seeing how interested they are into you what's your best options and you know playing the percentages on what you will be able to get and what you won't so still a lot to be determined at the quarterback position all right a lot going on today at bama online the dead period lifts visits are expected to pick up all week Tim, what is going to be the big visit weekend for Alabama? Or is this just going to be a consistent trickle of big-time names coming in throughout the spring? Yeah, it's going to be just, you know, we've got a list over there. Andrew Bone, Joseph Hastings do a great job keeping that list updated. And it's just, it's a daily, it's a daily yeah. uh, visit. The weekends will be easier. Obviously, you got kids in school. Uh, you know, you're not. it's not as easy just to get up and drive to Tuscaloosa. But on the weekends, it's going to be the busiest. But you're going to have guys – trickling in and out just consistently through this uh, this spring practice. And also, honestly, there's a lot of interest and curiosity. They don't know what they're going to see, but they're, you know, a lot of people are excited to see it. Yeah, and uh, like I said, or like you said, that visitor list just keeps growing and growing. I go to Bama Online almost every morning, and new names updated all the time. You guys should go check it out. Tim Watts, appreciate you taking your time on Monday morning to drop by the Inside Scoop. You got it, guys. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed that, go check out the hundreds of videos that we have on this channel. And also, do me a favor. Hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel.